And I'm joined now by the editor of the two, the first two special papers of the 125th anniversary here, Pat Bickford. Pat, thank you so much for being here with us. You're welcome. It's my, my pleasure. So we're calling these special papers here at GSA, but I think many people know they're actually published as books, and now we understand why. They're awfully right. thick. Right. So we have the impact of geological sciences on society and the web of geological sciences, which touches on the advances, the impacts, and interactions. That's right. So how, did, how was it that you ended up becoming the editor of these papers? Well, uh, in, in 2009, the Society's annual meeting was in Portland, and uh, Sharon Mosher, who was a past president of the Society, convened a committee to inquire, how should we celebrate the 125th? Because it was coming up mm -hmm. in, in four years. <clears throat> and I was uh, invited to be a member of that committee because I was, at the time, books editor for okay. GSA. And so we talked a lot about what to do to celebrate, and there were a lot of ideas, and many of them have been have materialized, but one of, the, one of the things was, I said, we should publish some books. <laughs> that made, made sense since I was books editor. And that, that idea was <clears throat> uh, accepted, and my initial thought was we should, we should look at some books, some books that would look, explore, what have we learned in the last 25 years, since the centennial in 1988. But the opinion of everybody was, no, let, let's, let's expand it a bit. <clears throat> let's look at what, what's happened in the last 50 years. And so, um, so, that's, that, so my initial idea was basically this book, which would look at advances <clears throat> in the specific, or many of the specific sub-disciplines of our science, which is a very multidisciplinary mm -hmm. field. You know. It would embrace things like petrology, geophysics, geochemistry, paleontology, sedimentology, structural, you know, all of these things. So that was my initial idea, <clears throat> and that's, that's, that's what book one is about. Okay. And <clears throat> then other people on the committee said, well, it would be good also to look at uh, what has been the changing impact of the geological sciences on society over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. And so that was how this other book came about. <clears throat> and um, that was less less sort of my focus. I'm kind of a pretty academic sort of person. <clears throat> but nevertheless, I had a lot of help in choosing the right people. And, and once we got into it, it, it turned out to be uh, as exciting as this one. And let's, me. all right, well, let's talk about the impact on society okay. and what came out of this paper mm -hmm. slash book. Yeah, <laughs> slash book, right. <laughs> right. Uh, over the last 50 years, what have the biggest impacts been from the geosciences on our society? Well, you can you can you can break it down into a number of different things, but I'm going to I'll I'll cite three or four. Okay. Uh, the, the first is um, energy. Uh, you know, we've always needed energy, but as society has grown and developed, uh, our need for energy has increased um, exponentially, <clears throat> and the means of finding energy sources has developed. Uh, enormously with new technologies and new understandings of the way the earth works. Mm -hmm. And so the one feeds back into the other in a sense. For example, the development of what we call plate tectonics gave understandings about where might we look for energy resources, for oil and gas, for example, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or uranium. Uh, and, um, and then there's been uh, new technologies developed and of course the most recent one that everybody talks about is is hydrofracking, mm -hmm. you know, and <clears throat> 50 years ago nobody, nobody knew anything much about that. And now we can get oil and gas out of rocks that weren't considered sources in the, in the, in the 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's been a major thing. Uh, another important advance has been in uh, mineral resources. And uh, just on Sunday, <clears throat> um, John Price, who's the author of the paper in this one on mineral resources gave an absolutely stunning talk on the worldwide, the growth of worldwide need of mineral commodities. You know, he used copper as an example. Mm -hmm. The use of copper has, you know, tripled or something like that. And, you know, and how and where do we look for things like that? And of course, again, our enhanced understanding of the way the earth works, uh, mineral deposits of that sort are commonly associated with volcanism. Uh, and igneous activity, and so where does that happen? Where do we look? 
And so a consequence of that, for example, is the development of enormous mineral deposits in Indonesia, which is a volcanic island arc. Okay. And what would be the other one? You mentioned there were... There are others. <coughs> uh, and then one that I think is very, very important and on everybody's mind nowadays is water. Mm -hmm. Because as the world's population grows, the deed for water continues to increase. And so managing uh, water and water resources has become you know, a, a major concern of everybody's government, ours included. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we have a wonderful paper from a man named John Bredehup who wrote uh, on water resources. What are they? How are they managed? Uh, how, are, how can they be contaminated? How do we how do we do this? Mm -hmm. you know? Huge issue here in Huge Colorado. Issue. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. one more, and this is important. Uh, and that's what we call geologic hazards. Fifty years ago, nobody paid a whole lot of attention. They were there. Volcanoes erupted. Mm -hmm. Earthquakes occurred, landslides occurred, you know, all that sort of thing. But nobody paid a whole lot of attention. But now, with enhanced technology, uh, and particularly with high-speed computing, it's possible to take all these things into account and, and even make predictions, uh, risk asse assessments, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And there's a major article by uh, Mary Lou Zoback and a number of her colleagues uh, on that subject as well. All right. Well, congratulations on yeah, the job of being the editor yeah. of, of such prestigious papers at such a special time on this yeah. 125th anniversary. Yeah.